Hey everyone, Blizzard here. I'm making a tutorial on how to make a H2M server. Um, so this is H2M mod, seems like a lot of people are getting stuck on this one. Um, it's pretty similar to a lot of other COD servers, just with a couple of specific things. Um, so some of the stuff that's required, you're gonna need a Windows server to host it on. It doesn't currently work on Linux, and I don't think there's any plans to make it work. Um, you're gonna need your public IP address, which we'll go over soon. Private IP, if you're hosting it on your own local network. You're going to need a full copy of MWR and the H2M mod. Um, so if you've already got the game installed uh, and you're playing, that will suffice. You just need to copy it over to your server like this. Um, you're also going to need the server files. I'm going to put the link in the description here. Um, it's going to be this 7-zip file uh, and it's just going to contain some stuff that you need to actually run the server. Um, you're going to need some basic knowledge of networking and server admin. Um, so if you're on a VPS, uh, you probably won't need to port forward, but you'll still need to understand firewall rules and whatnot. If you are hosting it on your own local network, you're going to need to know how to port forward from your router, which is one of the points here. Um, and of course, we're going to have to allow it through the local Windows um, firewall. All right, so first thing you want to do um, is jump into your game directory. And you're going to open up the server stuff zip. You're going to grab the server default.bat and the server default.cfg and copy those across. Now, if you do want bots to autofill your server, you're going to get this user scripts folder and you're going to place that into the h2m mod directory. In my case, I did already have it there, um, but you just copy that across and you'll see in this folder you have the bots.gsc. Alright, so first thing you need to do in here, um, you've got the server default.bat file. We're going to edit that in our text editor. Um, now, most of you won't need to touch anything in here. You can see that it's defining what configuration it's going to use right here by looking at that CFG file. And it's going to define what port we want to use. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to change the port number, um, but if you're only hosting one server, you will not need to touch this. Once you've made all the changes you need, just hit save. Next, we're going to go into the configuration file. Open that up with your text editor of choice. I'm going to go with VS Code. Inside of this is where we're actually going to define uh, everything in relation to our server. So first here, SV hostname. So you're going to set your hostname. So if we just went uh, test server, you've got a bunch of other options in here. They do have comments next to every one. I suggest you just go through and read them and configure them as you like. Um, the one other specific one we'll cover in here is under this section here for the Archon settings. You see you've got an Archon password. This is going to be used to connect with IW4RM admin if you choose to set that up. Um, so make sure you set this password to something you can remember. We'll just do test for today. Uh, in the rest of this config file is all of your game type settings. Uh, and then you come down to the bottom and you've got your map rotation. So you've got a few presets there. Um, but you're also able to go and create your own. I suggest you just have a read through this configuration file and set it however you like. Once you've got that updated, save that. Uh, and now we're just going to go ahead and run this batch file. So this is a restarter. It's going to restart the server if it crashes for whatever reason. Uh, and it's going to launch the H2M mod. We'll be back in one second once that's all loaded up. Okay, now we can see that the server's loaded up. We can see that it's loaded in uh, a map, uh, which is great if we scroll up a little bit. We can see all the stuff it's loaded in. So it's loaded up uh, on crash. We can see here test server on npm crash, and there's got 17 players, which are those autofill bots. Uh, so as far as the server goes, this is now completed. Um, you can actually join this server, um, provided your network rules allow it. So that's gonna be our next step. Um, I'm gonna suggest you open up PowerShell as administrator. Um, and then grab this PowerShell command from the description. Um, so update the local port to be whatever port you set in the bat file. Um, but this is basically just going to allow traffic in over a UDP protocol on the port for the game. You will need this for other people to be able to connect. Paste that in there, you're going to get OK, and that's done. The next thing you're going to want to do is if you're hosting this on a local server and you need to port forward, um, you're going to need to type ipconfig. In here, you're going to get a local IP address. You are going to need this one. So if you're connecting from a different computer, this is how you will connect on your own local network. If you're hosting this on the same computer you're playing on, you can just use localhost. Um, from here, you will need to go and port forward. 
Um, so if you don't know how to do that, I suggest you look up a tutorial for your specific router as it's very different for all of them. Usually a great place to start is this default gateway. Put this address into your web browser uh, and it should bring up a control panel for your router. But that'll allow you to Google how to do it for whatever particular model you're presented with there. Alternatively, if you're hosting this in a VPS or something like that where you only have an external IP address, you may need to configure some firewall rules in your VPS settings, it completely depends. If you were setting this up in uh, AWS EC2, for example, you would need to allow this um, within your security groups. Okay, now that the server is up, anyone should be able to connect to this on your local network or over the internet. Uh, if you'd like to appear in the server browser for IW4, um, what you're going to need to do is set up IW4M admin. Uh, so I've got a, a link in the description here for the latest IW4 admin. I'm just going to clear out this folder and start it from scratch for the sake of this tutorial. So open this one up. And you're just going to drag all of these files into a new directory. This will take a moment to extract, we'll be back when that's done. Okay, now that is extracted, we can go ahead and start up IW4 Admin. So, some of the questions it's going to ask you will go through here. Um, so, would you like to enable the web front? For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go no. Uh, this basically allows you to have a web console uh, to administer your servers. It's going to ask if you want multiple owners. I'm going to say no as well here. Uh, social media links, all pretty self-explanatory stuff. It's going to ask if we want a server-side anti-cheat. We're going to say no, as we're not using IW4. And we're going to say no for the profanity. Now it's just going to go and set up your database. Give that one moment. Okay, so this part's very important. Now we've got to select what game parser we're going to use. Since we're using the H2M mod, we're going to click 6 and hit enter. And it's going to ask if you would like to automatically determine your server IP. So if you want to appear connectable in the public server list, you're going to have to say no to this, um, which means next here, you're going to have to put in your public IP address. Um, so you can get your public IP address just by going to whatismyipaddress.com. See that one here. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to use localhost. Um, but you should put your uh, external IP address here. Then you're going to have your server port. This needs to match whatever port this server is currently being hosted on. For most people, it's going to be the default. For me, uh, it's going to be the one that I manually configured for the tutorial. And then you're going to have your Archon password. So this is what we set in the server configuration. So make sure you go and find this one and it has to exactly match, otherwise it will not work. Here it is here, so we can see I've set it as test. So if we jump back over here, test. Now it's saved the configuration, would you like to add another? If you have multiple servers, you can do this. For this tutorial, I'm gonna say no. Now it's gonna to attempt to establish a connection with the server. This is only gonna work if the server is currently up and running. We can see that it is now successfully connected, it is now monitoring the test server. Um, so now IW4 admin will periodically send messages. You're going to be able to jump on um, to the server uh, and, and connect. And then once you're in there, you'll be able to claim ownership, etc. I suggest you go and read the documentation for IW4M. Okay, that basically concludes this tutorial. Um, there are a few things I will go over, a couple of errors that I've seen. If you get any sort of errors about files not found, I suggest you go and just download everything again. Um, you're probably missing files. If, you, uh, if your server crashes while loading one of the fast files here, so H2M ranges, for example, you'll need to install Steam. Uh, Steam is actually a requirement. Um, I've also got a link in the description for this redistributable ins installer. Um, so this is something I found from Chase Dev. It basically goes through and installs every possible redistributable you might need um, to run a Call of Duty server. Um, there's a lot in there, obviously, running anything from the internet, be careful, um, but this does appear to be safe. Awesome, if you have any questions, please jump into the H2M Revive Discord and go into the server support channel. There's plenty of people, lively community, willing to help. Thanks for watching.